Hello, and welcome to the 2025 Sea Grant Canals Fellowship Opportunity Webinar. My name is Maddie, and I work at the National Sea Grant Office, and I will be telling you a little bit more about this opportunity. If you have any questions following this webinar, please reach out to us by phone at 240-507-3712, email oar.sg.fellows at noaa.gov, search on our website at seagrant.noaa.gov backslash canals, or reach out to your local Sea Grant program. The mission of Sea Grant is to enhance the practical use and conservation of coastal, marine, and Great Lakes resources to create a sustainable economy and environment. We do this through a public-private partnership, uh, the, the public part being based at the NOAA National Sea Grant, or sorry, NOAA, or National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, based in Silver Spring, Maryland, with 34 partner universities based across the country in all of the Great Lakes and coastal states, and sometimes twice. You can see where we're located uh, by those blue birds. Um, so if you're in one of those states, going to school in one of those states, those are considered your local Sea Grant programs. Please reach out to them to learn more about this opportunity and the work that they're doing. Specifically, the Canals Fellowship has been supporting, has supported over 1,500 students uh, in its entirety. Uh, the Sea Grant Fellowship provides a unique educational and professional experience to graduate students who have an interest in ocean, coastal, and Great Lakes resources and the national policy decisions affecting those resources. For the last 40 years, we've been launching illustrious careers. Sea Grant, the Sea Grant Canals Fellowship offers direct experience working in the executive and legislative branches of the federal government on the latest issues in ocean and coastal management, fisheries, and research. To get a little bit more specific, the fellowship is a one-year hands-on learning experience through a fully immersive work experience within the Washington, D.C. region. Fellows should expect to be placed within the executive or the legislative branches of the federal government. On the executive side, you might be working with some of our potential host agencies, such as NOAA, the Fish and Wildlife Service, Environmental Protection Agency, Navy, the Ge U.S. Geological Survey, Department of Interior, U.S. Coast Guard, or National Science Foundation, to name a few. Many host offices have hosted fellows, and both, and both mentors and colleagues are often alumni. You may work on very specific topics and become an expert or serve in high-level coordinating roles. On the legislative side, uh, you might be placed um, in committees or personal offices in both parties and chambers. Many of our host offices have hosted fellows in the past and have a deep investment in the Sea Grant program. As a legislative fellow, you will typically work on hot topics in the office, which may change throughout the year it may not always be related specifically to ocean and Great Lakes, but will be in the environmental space. The Canals timeline does take a full year, so please take that into consideration as you are planning out your future. Students will apply to the state program in which they are currently enrolled in school in February, by February 15th of 2024. In the months of February, March, and June, the applications will go under uh, extensive review uh, and an, uh, a, a selection panel, um, and finalists will be notified in June. In July, we will work with finalists and alternates to learn more about the programs. In August, we will determine the status of our alternate applicants. And then in September, we will tell the world about the exciting news of your status as a finalist. In October, we will host our Executive Placement Week, in January, we'll hope to our legislative placement week. And then in February of 2025, you will begin your fellowship. So like I said, this process is a year long process. So please take that into consideration as you are planning your future. A little bit more about what the actual award entails. The fellowship award itself is for placement in Washington DC area and the legislative or executive branch for 12 months of work. For the 2025 cycle, the salary or stipend is $71,400. This may include fringe or personal expenses such as healthcare, taxes, and employee benefits, but may change depending on the state in which you are uh, selected through. The discretionary budget is $5,000, and this is for allowable expenses and may include but are not limited to relocation prior to and following the fellowship, ap academic tuition, journal publication fees, academic and fellowship-related travel, 
conference fees, online trainings, and workshops. Then, on top of that, you may get a little bit of additional money for travel. If placement week is in person, we do provide a stipend for that of $2,500. Um, and then it, there is a potential to have uh, up to $15,000 added on for host office related travel. So this is things um, that are not necessarily within your specific professional development plan, but in specific support of your host office. Um, this does not apply to all fellows. This is just for some. It doesn't mean that if you don't get it, you won't be traveling. It just is how, how you're going to get reimbursed for that travel. So what does it mean to be eligible for this opportunity? An applicant's eligibility uh, is any student, regardless of citizenship, is about eligible to submit to this opportunity if they fall into these three categories. The student is enrolled in a, towards a degree in a graduate program, master's, PhD, or JD. Two, the graduate degree will be awarded through an accredited institution of higher education in the United States or US territories. And three, the student has an interest in coastal, ocean, and Great Lakes resources and the national policy decisions affecting those resources. All applications should be submitted through the Sea Grant program in which the student is currently enrolled in their degree. If there is no Sea Grant program in your state, one will be assigned. So for example, if you are a resident of Montana going to school in California, you will be applying through the California Sea Grant uh, programs. If you are a resident of Texas going to school in Maryland, even though Texas has a, has a Sea Grant program, because you are going to school in Maryland, you will apply through the Maryland Sea Grant program. Here's some additional criteria that may affect your eligibility. The one-year fellowship will take place in the National Capital Region, or the DMV. Applicants must be prepared to relocate to the DMV. Non-US citizens are responsible for obtaining the appropriate visas to allow them to work in Washington, D.C. area, during the fellowship period. Foreign nationals and dual citizens, please note, while this fellowship is open to all eligible students regardless of nationality, a significant number of participating federal host offices are unable to accept foreign nationals and some may restrict dual nationals as fellows. While more offices are able to host dual citizens, there may be restrictions. This may reduce the number of placement opportunities available to foreign nationals. Please note, foreign nationals are eligible for both the executive and legislative cohorts. Applicants must be able to pass a federal background security check, which includes investigations on arrest records, questions on drug use, and possible review of social media presence. Prior contact or arrangements made with possible host offices before the start of placement week will be cause for immediate disqualification from the process. Applicants that have been accepted as national finalists and or become fellows are not eligible to apply again without the written permission of the National Sea Grant Fellowships Manager, which will only be granted in response to ex exceptional life events. A little bit more for our foreign nationals. Um, foreign nationals are eligible for both executive and legislative cohorts. Uh, the non-U.S. Non citizens are responsible for obtaining the appropriate visas to allow you to work in the DMV. Some typical visa steps, types that we see our students on are the F-1 visa or the optical, opti, optional practical training extension, or OPT. Uh, the fellowship is, again, um, open to folks of all nationalities. However, a significant number of participating, participating federal host offices are unable to accept foreign nationals or dual citizens as fellows. So getting into a little bit more about what is involved in the application and the review criteria that your materials will be looked at. Hang with me, there's a lot of information on these slides and I will do my best to slow down uh, and cover all the information. So just a high level overview of what is to be submitted uh, in the project narrative. There's a portion that's to be submitted by the student and then there's a portion to be submitted by the program. So as a student, you're going to be asked to submit a curriculum vitae or a CV. Uh, you're gonna be asked to respond to a couple questions. Um, you're going to be asked to provide a statement of your relevant coursework and future year plans. You're gonna to need to submit some letters of recommendations as well as transcripts. If you are a student from a state that is not 
going to school in a state that does not have a Sea Grant program, you will also include a letter from us that says you are eligible to apply. Uh, then also on top of that, your director, the Sea Grant director in the state through which you apply will submit a, uh, a letter based on the interview that they have with you. This is a summary of the NOFO. Please make sure you refer to the student guide and the NOFO or notice of federal funding opportunity for the full and complete legal text. So what goes into a CV? Um, again, this is to be submitted by the student. It's two pages in max. Uh, so anything longer than two pages will be redacted. Um, so please only submit two pages. Um, you should not include personal contact information or web links to external resources. So no need to take up space with things like your LinkedIn or um, links to your articles or blogs. Um, all that stuff will not be included. Um, the CV uh, itself is, with 10, is worth 10 points of the total application. Um, and it will be scored as follows. The CV does not adequately address the expected outline, uh, will be zero points. The CV addresses the critical criterion or report in a confusing way, one point. The CV meets the criterion in an average or expected way, about five points. And the CV meets the criterion in an exceptional way, will be valued at 10 points. For the CV, you will be reviewed um, is, as such. The student has employment, volunteer, or extracurricular activities in academic, applied, research, administration, outreach, or policy positions. The education and experience, personal and professional, in the student's area of expertise are appropriate to their career stage. The applicant demonstrates academic, professional, or personal experiences that are relevant and applicable to, to serving the American people. The applicant's expertise shows prior leadership roles relevant to their career stage. Uh, just a pro tip, uh, we encourage you to consider use, uh, utilizing formatting, like things like bold, italics, and dictations to help provide a clear and concise CV, but don't go wild. That can get overwhelming as, as well. So up next is the personal, educational, and career development responses. This is the, the big chunky part of the application. Um, so hang with me, I promise I will do my best to walk you through this. Um, this section in total is worth 65 points of your total application. Um, so as this, um, we ask that your overall personal educational and career development response does not e exceed 1,530 words. Uh, each section and subsequent subsection should be answered separately using the section headers. Section headers will not count as part of the overall word count. A few high-level notes um, and tips about this section. Uh, the student should emphasize their abilities and expectations of the fellowship experience in terms of their career development. Each section and subsequent subsection should be answered separately using the section headers below. Section headers will not count uh, um, as part of your overall word count. Uh, the student should not include personal contact information or web links to external resources. If included, these will be redacted. Um, a couple of pro tips. Read each section carefully and make sure to address the full question being asked. Think beyond just academics. Your life experiences, including educational, professional, and personal, make you the individual you are. Do not repeat your CV, rather expand on it. All right, so section one. Uh, this is the smallest section of the personal, educational, and career development responses. Um, there's two questions as part of this section. Uh, the first is the student should use one stem to describe themselves. And the second is that the student should list five adjectives that someone would with close with a close personal connection, such as a coworker, supervisor, um, would use to describe them. Uh, this section is worth five points. Uh, and the review for this is that the student demonstrates creative thinking and a willingness to think outside of the box. So just for this section, please consider this as sort of letting us know a little bit about your personality. All right, hang with me. I know there's a lot of words on this slide. I did my best to present the information in a way that was digestible. Um, you can access these slides online uh, as a resource to review them on your own leisure, but I'm going to talk you through them as well. So the section two, as part of the personal, educational, and career development responses, this is more about your career path and objectives. In this section, we have three questions. 
Um, the recommended word count for each prompt in this section is about 250 words. Each prompt should be answered separately using the section headers. Section headers will not count as the overall word count. So I'm just going to go uh, through each section or each question, uh, each different um, prompt, then review criteria, um, and then I'll move on to the, the second question. In this section, each of the questions are worth 10 points, so 10 of the 65 points total, um, and they they're all sort of reviewed. Uh, the point scale is the same for all of them. So the first question or section two, question A or 2A, um, the, the prompt is that the student should discuss any experience, research or otherwise, that supports or relates to the mission of the National Sea Grant College Program or the State Sea Grant Program. Um, however, you do not have to have any uh, direct connection to Sea Grant to be eligible. Uh, the student should emphasize, if relevant, any experience with extending and distilling science for non-scientific audience. This question will be reviewed based on the following. The student clearly links experience to the mission of Sea Grant, national or state. The student demonstrates their ability to convey scientific knowledge in broader, non-scientific contexts. The student demonstrates creative thinking, analytical skills, and or indicates their capacity and willingness to make connections between science and broader economic, social, and political issues. Question two, or 2B, or section two, question B. Uh, the student should discuss their interest in the fellowship with a specific focus on how the Canals Fellowship supports the student's career path. The student should focus on how the Canals program would further support their development as a professional. This question will be reviewed on the following. The student demonstrates an understanding of the Canals Fellowship program. The career path and objectives demonstrates the student's diverse personal and professional background. The student clearly articulates their career or professional goals. And the student spe is specific, direct, and concise while discussing what they would bring to and gain from the Knaus Fellowship. And then the final question in section two, or 2C, uh, the student should discuss the transferable skills or skills that can be applied across a variety of disciplines that they would bring to the Knauss Fellowship. In this response, the student should highlight experiences from their personal, professional, and academic backgrounds. This question will be reviewed on the following. The skill set demonstrated will provide a foundation for success in the Knauss Fellowship. The student is specific, direct, and concise while discussing the skills they have cultivated through their career. So that is section two, or career paths and objectives. Now, the third section of the personal educational and career development responses, or your career path experiences, uh, consists of these three questions. Again, I will cover the question uh, and then the review criteria. Again, in this section, each prompt should be about 250 words, and they should be answered separately using the headers, and the he section headers will not be part of the overall word count. All right, section three, question A, or 3A. Um, the prompt is, during the fellowship, finalists will serve in a range of capacities, including developing and delivering public programs or services, informing policymaking, and providing evidence-based advice to leaders. The student should discuss how they have and or will embrace the concept of public service. This question will be reviewed as following. The student demonstrates an interest in contributing to public programs or service. The student demonstrates experiences in public service, including but not limited to volunteering, leadership, extension, or educational experiences. These do not have to be directly related to the mission of NOAA. Question B or 3B. Uh, the prompt is that the student should discuss a situation in which they have worked with a person or group with different perspectives, life experiences, beliefs, etc., from their own to achieve a common goal. The student is encouraged to use examples. This will be reviewed as following. The student demonstrates creativity and a willingness to navigate a challenging situation. The student demonstrates leadership and problem-solving initiatives. The student has shown interest in working with a variety of collaborators, community members, and or interested partners. Prompt three for this section, or 3C. 
The student should discuss a situation in which they overcame a challenge, for example, within a community or institution, personally, professionally, specifically as it relates to how they took a leadership role. The student should also consider including a reflection on what they learned from this experience. This will be reviewed as following. The student demonstrates creativity and willingness to navigate a challenging situation, and the student demonstrates leadership in problem-solving initiative. Again, each question in this section is worth 10 points. So that's 10 points of the overall 65 for this large section. Um, and so now we're gonna move on to the third section, or section four, which is the relevant, sorry, section three, relevant coursework and future year plans. This should be one page single spaced. Anything beyond that will be redacted. In this section, uh, the student should discuss any relevant coursework or their future year activities. Relevant coursework being that the student may discuss any completed or in progress classes that they deem relevant to their success in the Canals Fellowship Program. Future year activities being described as the student should discuss a listing of classes and or plans for the spring, summer, and fall of 2024. This section is worth 10 points and it will be reviewed as following. The student has activities in academic, applied research, administration, outreach, or policy. The future education and experience, personal or professional, supports the student's goal in providing further experiences ap applicable to the CANAPS program. A pro tip about this section is please provide an explanation for why a class you have taken or activity in your future applies to or supports the program. The fourth section are the letters of recommendation. We're asking for two letters of recommendation. They're worth five points each. Each letter may not be more than two pages single spaced. So this, the description of these letters, the two letters of recommendation from individuals who have worked with the student, including at least from one from a faculty member associated with the stu student's current enrollment, was knowledge of the student's academic and research, when applicable, performance. Each letter should not exceed two pages single spaced and should clearly indicate the letter's writer's name and position. These letters should A, discuss the following attributes of the student, self-motivation, response to setbacks, skills and involvement in teamwork, collaborative leadership skills, willingness to learn a new skill or topic, academic performance and potential, and Speak to anything else the review panel should know about the strengths that the student will bring to the fellowship. We will review these letters on the following. The letter writers demonstrate a knowledge of the student and their abilities. The letter writer speaks to the leadership potential, confidence, maturity, and self-direction of the student. The letter writers provide evidence that the student's willingness and flexibility to tackle issues beyond their area of expertise and an openness to capacity to expand in experiences. And then finally, the letter writers should provide evidence of the student's ability to convey scientific knowledge in a broader non-scientific context. A pro tip about your letters, uh, please, we encourage you to schedule an appointment or meeting with your letter writers well in advance. Give them time to write these letters. Discuss the program to which you are applying, the selection criteria, and highlight your most relevant professional experiences. Make this process easier for the letter writers. Also, give them space to say no if they feel that they do not have the time or confidence to write this letter. There's two other things that are part of your application package that are not part of the, the score, scoring criteria but are necessary um, for, for the application. Please submit. Um, clear or scanned copies of all undergraduate and graduate trans student transcripts. We're totally okay if you submit unofficial transcripts, um, but please make sure it's for both undergrad and graduate school. And then the sixth one, um, which will only apply to those who are applying from states without a Sea Grant program, is an out-of-state letter provided by the National Sea Grant uh, Office. So this final bit uh, that comes into it is the Sea Grant Director Letter. This is to be submitted by the program. Uh, as a student, it is not your responsibility to write this, don't worry. Your responsibility will be to have an interview with your director. Um, these letters will be two pages, single space max. Um, and what is comes into this section? 
Um, a signed letter of recommendation from a state sea grant director, which is built from an interview with the applicant. The letter should not exceed two pages, single spaced. As part of the interview and subsequent letters, the director shall A, demonstrate why the student aligns with the goals of the CANAPS program, B, highlight the skills the student emphasizes in the interview, and C, explains any gaps in the CV or personal educational career development responses or anything that student feels they were unable to include in the application that they feel is important for the review panel to know. This letter is worth five points and will be reviewed as followed. The director letter demonstrates how the student fits with the CANAS program, including any discussion of why the student belongs in the CANAS program, highlights the skills, academic, professional, or personal that the student would bring for the CANAS program, elaborates on information not specifically addressed by the student in their application package. Um, when you're going into this uh, with your director, just be yourself um, in your interview. Don't try uh, and do anything that is out of the norm. Um, tell your story, be true to who you are. So again, this is a high level overview of what the review criteria looks like um, so that you have a better understanding. Um, the CV, 10 points, uh, the personal educational career development responses, that's that big chunky meaty section. Um, it, the first section is worth five points, the second section is worth 30, the third section is worth 30. Your relevant coursework and future year plans is worth 10 points. Your letters of recommendation are all each worth five points. And then there's one final scoring criteria, um, which is worth 10 points, and that looks at the overall application cohesion. All aspects of the application materials, so your CV, personal, educational, and career development responses, relevant coursework, and future year plans, letters of recommendation, and director's letters will be part of this um, scoring criteria. All right, finally, the review process. Um, at the national level, again, this is what it looks like. It does take a full year um, with lots of folks contributing to this process, including your state programs and volunteers from the CANAUS network in looking at your applications. Um, you will, your applications are due February 15th. Your programs will submit them in March, and then we will review them in April, and finalists will be notified in June. A few quick tips as you go through the application process. Um, request that you be connected to an alumni, or two, or three, um, that may be able to answer your questions about the program. Reread the application materials and your own application materials. Letters of rec, prep your letter writers about the opportunity. Give them time to provide meaning, meaningful comment about you. Start early, collect all these pieces can take time. You wanna give yourself space uh, to write strong answers. Stay to, true to yourself, this is your application. Let your character and goals be the focus. And the final one is proofread. Please proofread, it is very important. People notice the small things. Finally, again, if you have any questions, my name is Maddie. I work at the National Sea Grant Office. Here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out anytime and we'll be, do our best to answer those questions or reach out to your local state Sea Grant program. Thanks for listening.